Spectacular day for baseball at U.S. Cellular Field as we get you ready for game number two of a three-game series in interleague play. It's the Braves and White Sox on this Saturday. Jason Benetti, Steve Stone along with you. Thanks for joining us. We found out last night that once again, absence makes the heart grow fonder. The former Sox did the Sox in. Well, they were supposed to be welcome guests. They were unwelcome guests last night as Gordon Beckham and Tyler Flowers really got the job done and the entire Brave team made life miserable for Chris Sale. So Beckham had three hits. He was certainly a pain last night, but the big blow goes to Tyler Flowers. It's a two-run homer against Chris Sale early. Chris Sale gave up eight earned runs. That ties a career high, and Sale later doubled. So the former Sox players and current Braves players had just a big night. As you can see, the one run for Gordon Beckham, a two-run homer, and an RBI double for Tyler Flowers. Hopefully today, Jose Quintana will have a better effort. Jose, not an all-star, but his last outing against the Houston Astros was fantastic. There's no way that he can throw any better than he did last time out in Houston because it was a red-hot club. He threw the ball exceptionally well. He got ahead and used all of his pitches and gave up just two hits to a very strong Astro team. Going seven innings, leaving only six outs to be covered by the bullpen, Jose Quintana had it all together. Julio Turan is going to be his opponent today. In day games this year, two and one, an ERA under two and a half. And last start, you see the magnificent numbers of Jose Quintana. Hopefully he can duplicate that, and the Sox will take the second in the three-game series. And if they do that, they're going to be able to win six series in a row. But first things first. Got to have today's game first. Sox and Braves getting ready to go from U.S. Cellular Field. Quintana versus Tehran coming up shortly. Chicago White Sox baseball is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light filter. Cheers. It's Miller time. Honda, start something special with a great deal on a Honda, now at your Honda dealer. Xfinity, Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. Ford, America's best-selling brand, six years running. Inviting you to check out our fuel-efficient lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. And by your Chicago and Northwest Indiana Hyundai dealers. Test drive their all-star lineup today. Visit buyhyundai.com.
back at U.S. Cellular Field, just a couple of minutes away from the opening pitch, the Braves and the White Sox this afternoon on WGN. Uh, Dan Rohn out in center field. We'll get you back to Jason Benetti and Steve Stone for the start of today's game in just a second. But while we have a moment, in case you missed it on the pregame show, Carlos Rodon, the Sox starting pitcher, has been placed on the disabled list. Uh, he's down for 15 days with an injury suffered yesterday when he slipped walking out of the dugout, braced himself with his pitching hand and sprained his wrist. So he's going to be down for a bit. And for Robin Ventura, that puts him uh, in a bit of a scramble mode with respect to his rotation when the All-Star break is over. Last night put a wrinkle in it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're going to have to look at that again because of what, uh, what Carlos has done. So we're going to... It won't be Rodan on that right here. It will not, it, it'll probably be Q starting it. Okay. I, I think that would be safe to say the Q would do it, but uh, it, it won't be Chris and it won't be Carlos. Chris, Chris, if he throws an inning, could he come back as soon as that Sunday? I think he could. It, it probably is not going to happen. Okay. Um, you know, where we had him before, it would, you wouldn't think that it would it would be Sunday. Like, I'm not going to commit to anything, right. but I know that uh, Q, Q will be the first guy back. Yeah, Chris Sale expected to pitch one inning uh, at most in the All-Star game, but as Robin said, we'll probably miss that uh, series in California against the Angels and probably get started again against the Mariners as the Sox road trip continues. As for Rodon, uh, with the break, I guess if you're going to get injured, it's a good time to do it. Uh, he's expected to miss only one start, but may have to go out on a rehab assignment to get himself ready to pitch in the major leagues again. So that's the White Sox pitching story when they come back from the break. Sox have some work to do this afternoon against the Braves. Jason Benetti and Steve Stone set to call it for you when we return. Definition is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Lovely day for baseball at U.S. Cellular Field and the Atlanta Braves, who scratched out more than 10 runs for the first time this season last night, go with this starting lineup. And it's the same one as yesterday. Marquez and Frank Core have flipped Marquez to DH. Freddie Freeman, six homers, his last 25. He's turning it up, Steve. Freddie Freeman's their best player overall, and we'll take a look at the defense. And now Robin's going to line them up behind Jose Quintana, He's trying to win one before the break. Melky Cabrera, J.B. Shuck, and Adam Eaton, a very familiar outfield. With Frazier, Anderson, Lowry, and Abreu in the infield. Brett Lowry back at second base. Keanu Navarro behind the plate once again. And Jose Quintana on the hill. Six and eight this year, the ERA just over three. But here's the remarkable durability of Jose Quintana. He's thrown at least 100 pitches in each of his last eight starts. That's the longest active streak in the major league. When you do that, you save the bullpen. And after a tough game last night, where Chris Sale just had one of those nights, Jose Quintana trying to make up for it today with Bob Davidson, Lance Barrett, Dan Iasonia, and Dale Scott around the umpiring crew. So we're ready to play baseball. Jason, take it away. 
Thank you, Steve. This is the first time in Major League history two natives of Colombia are starting against each other with Quintana and Tehran this afternoon as Darno takes ball number one. Chase Darno, who was one for three in last night's Atlanta win by the count of 11 to 8. I know he's a utility player, but playing just about every day, and I say utility as a compliment because he can play anywhere. So Brian Snitker, the manager, knows that he wants him in the lineup. He's got speed. He can do a lot of things, and you can plug him in anywhere and get a really good effort defensively. 29-year-old takes a strike, 2-1 and one on Darno. You mentioned Brian Snicker. He is an Illinois native. He was born in Mounds, Illinois, in the very southern tip. And over 40 years in the Braves organization. Two and two for Darno, leadoff batter of our game with the Sox at 44 up, 42 down. Eight back of Cleveland in the central. Atlanta 30 wins, 57 losses. 21 and a half behind first place Washington in the National League East. Darno does choke up on the bat, and normally that gives you a little more contact. He takes strike three, and Quintana's off to a roaring start. A little bad situation for the Sox. It's Carlos Rodon on the disabled list, retroactive to July 6th with a sprained left wrist. The injury report is brought to you by Dr. Anthony Romeo Orthopedics. If you've got a shoulder or elbow problem, go to RomeoOrthopedics.com or call 312-432-2342. Beckham takes a strike. Gordon Beckham, three out of five in yesterday's game. And the good news is with the All-Star break in between, it gives Carlos a couple extra days to rest up on that wrist. And you wouldn't expect that this is going to be a long affair with him. However, you really never know. So there's going to be at least a start where the Sox are going to have to fill in. Tommy Canely came up to take the roster spot, but he's a reliever. Canely up from Charlotte today. This is his third trip, so he has been yo-yoing back and forth. Ma. One, two. Is in the dirt. Two balls, two strikes for Beckham. We need to get a yo yo for the prize shelf. Or at least one to go with you. <laughs> two and two. Just inside. Three balls, two strikes. It's a good fastball by Q. Just missing off the inside corner, Bob Davidson, the veteran umpire, makes a good call. This is one every pitcher wants, every hitter believes it's very much inside. And catchers also want it. Tip foul, nice catch in the on deck circle. Jose Quintana, 27 years old, and a thoroughly impressive resume to be a possible All Star. A drive to left field, and the Braves are on the board first again. Gordon Beckham with his fourth hit in the series. That was a rolling breaking ball that Gordon was able to time and rode it out of the yard. This is normally a lively park. It's 77 degrees during the daytime. It's livelier than at night. And Beckham, with just his third home run of the year, drives in his 17th. And just like that, Sox trail. That one kind of settles and doesn't do a whole lot. And Gordon, who will at times have trouble with big fastballs, does not have trouble with the rolling breaking. So an Atlanta team which came into this series with 47 home runs for the year has hit four in one game and two batters. Freeman is an exceptional hitter and has big power against left hand pitchers specifically good opposite field power. That's where he went yesterday Freddie Freeman. 
in the first inning for a solo homer against Chris Sale. He was brought up through the Braves system. He is their best player, and he's one of the guys, if not the guy, that they say is untouchable in the trade market. Breaking ball one and two for Freeman. There you look at the last 25. I think 384, six home runs, 15 driven in with 10 doubles. He had a rib injury early in the season that he played through and just couldn't drive the ball. Full side ground ball, Brett Laurie back at second, throws out Freeman, and two gone in this first inning. I had the opportunity before the game to talk with Bill Bartholome, who is the chairman emeritus of these Atlanta Braves. He's a wonderful man. He's a native of Chicago. Every time I get a chance, and it's been often over the course of our careers, I've, I've talked with him. He is one of the great men of wisdom in the game. He was an original owner of the original Milwaukee Braves. Quite a guy, Bill Bartholome. Strike one to Marquecas. Twenty two doubles for Nick Marquez is to lead this team. He is the reverse Todd Frazier. He's got twenty two doubles five homers Frazier with eight doubles twenty four homers. He had just two home runs coming into Chicago where he seems to really enjoy things because he's hit three combined two against the Cubs in that stirring comeback and one here. He one is and two. He is however miscast as a cleanup hitter. I mean this guy is a. A one or two hitter. That's what he hit with Baltimore for a long time. However, two different times he drove in over 100 runs. He has struggled in his career with Jose Quintana, two for 12 for Marquez in his American League days. Two and two. Punch to short, Anderson down to a knee, and that retires the side. One out home run for Gordon Beckham. Hurts his former mates. One nothing Atlanta after a half inning. Top of the first inning, this Sox lineup for Robin Ventura starts with Tim Anderson through Eaton and Abreu as per normal. Cabrera, Frazier, Lori back at second. Down to J.B. Shuck, who's got three homers in his last 11. Let's take a look at the defense. And now Brian Snitker's going to line up his Braves. Darno, Enciarte, and Frank Corr in the outfield with Garcia, Ibar, Beckham, and Freeman in the infield. Tyler Flowers, former Sox player behind the plate. And Julio Tehran, their ace on the hill. He's three and seven, but a fine ERA of 272. Opponents hitting 197. 24 walks, 105 strikeouts. This guy throws everything. 
He's got a fastball that he throws mostly 91 92. He can get it up to 94 but he doesn't like to pitch there as a slider and it's a good one curveball will use a straight change on occasion and just about everything else you can think of. Foul ball for Tim Anderson who's played in 26 games. He's got multi hit games in 12 of those with his average just sub 300. Duran comes into this game over 500 for a team that hasn't been very good. So even though it's three and seven this year he came in 10 over 40 and 30 into this season with a lifetime ERA of 344. Ball and two strikes for Anderson from Julio Tehran. Whose name seemed to always come up when you're talking about prospects that might be dealt. Now he's in the majors and he's on the other side of that. He's he's one of those guys that somebody could get a lot of use of as a major league arm. They keep saying that they don't want to trade him either. But if you're going to get better and your farm system is not particularly good got to trade somebody who's very useful to get a haul of prospects. Sharp grounder is through for Tim Anderson. A leadoff base hit for the Sox rookie. It looked like a slider that didn't do a great deal and he was able to punch it right by Garcia. And to the right of Ibar. So that is a slider and just stays there in the middle of the plate. Nice way to start it off. Brings up Adam Eaton, who is one hit shy of 500 for his career. You're seeing a third way in on the grass. He believes Adam's going to bunt. Tyler Flowers, one for 36, trying to cut down would be base stealers. Not a bad time for a hit and run. What about just the run portion? You can do that. And if you happen to hit it, well, you hit it. But you would think at three for three, the Sox would take advantage of what Atlanta gives you, and that's a lot of stolen bags. Anderson holds, eating a ground ball to third. Garcia gets one out and not anymore. Electing not to run, and this one right at Garcia. Adam Eaton runs well, and Gordon Beckham probably would have liked to have that throw a little bit more to the outfield side and right in the middle of his chest because he had a transfer with his left hand coming across his body and couldn't get it to first base in time. One out, one out for Jose Abreu. There goes Eaton, and it's tipped foul into the hand of Bob Davidson. That was a stolen base for Adam Eaton very clearly. That ball was low and out of the zone, and just taking a look at the jump of Eaton, you pretty much have to try to take this one. In fact, it appeared to be a straight steal because he never looked back at contact. Normally, if you're thinking about contact, you're going to take a peek back to see if there was. Owen Watt for Abreu. Eaton with his 10 steals to lead the team. On the go again, Abreu, a fly ball right field. Frank Coor is still coming. Foul ground, two strikes. Pretty much tell the way the wind is blowing, and the wind is a factor here today because that ball started out very close to fair territory. The wind just batted it toward the seats there. You look at the flags and took it away from Frank Coor, so Jose is still alive, and Adam Eaton is getting his running in at first base. A 
he's essentially become a Wimbledon ball boy going baseline to baseline. Get a check with Kramer on that. Two strikes on a Brayu. And a throw to first. Quick move by Turan, who's got very quick feet. Gets the ball over there, realizing that his catcher very vulnerable to the stolen base. He wants to make sure that he keeps eating close. Adam holds, and it's a ball in the dirt. One and two for Abreu. It was two for three last night, scored a couple runs, drove in a run, and was summarily hit by a pitch. Another check on Eaton. On the last pitch at 0 2, Tyler Flowers moves outside and then able to block the ball. So he shifted. He wanted this one well off the plate. And he got it there. Good 0 2 pitch, good block by Tyler Flowers. On the ground, Tehran. Beckham, double play. Rally fizzles after one. The Braves by a run. Top of the second inning, one strike on Jeff Frank Core. Facing Jose Quintana. Thanks for joining us this lovely afternoon. He's Steve Stone. I'm Jason Benetti, our entire crew. As the Braves have a one-nothing lead on the Beckham home run as the second batter of this game. Two-time Brave, Jeff Frank Core. Came up with Atlanta. Had some very good years with Kansas City. And it always had a great throwing arm. Plus, he's a dead fastball hitter and loves the first pitch, which he swung at in this at bat. Takes there two and two. Knocked in three yesterday, Frank Hoare did, tying a season high with a two run double and a sack fly. He goes twisting in the wind there on an off speed pitch from Quintana. One out. 
Celebrate the holidays in the middle of summer with Christmas in July, Friday, July 22nd. Purchase a specially priced game ticket and receive a voucher for a White Sox Santa hat. Stay for the postgame fireworks set to Christmas music. To purchase this ticket package, visit whitesox.com slash Xmas. It's been the summer Yuletide with us. Fly ball right field, Adam Eaton chasing down at Garcia's bid for round number two. It's a pleasure to see Garcia actually taken down. He had four hits and then lined out in the eighth inning. So five times he hit the ball hard last night, and he's an all-purpose player in that. He can play outfield, play infield, but a lot of folks feel that his future might be in the American League as a DH. He looked pretty good yesterday, however. Yeah, he was designated to hit four times. Here is Tyler Flowers, who braces for strike one at 93 from Jose Quintana. Well, the Sox found out firsthand what Tyler Flowers has been doing recently. You, know, you say to people, oh, what have you been up to? He says, uh, extra base hits. 16 of his last 29 hits have gone for extra bases. Two last night. Doesn't hit the ball inside particularly well because he has a long swing, but in the last six, he's been brilliant. 364. And you see the extra base hits with six driven in. He does choke up on the bat, and he's so strong that it really doesn't affect his power at all. Oh, and two. Just missed. That one not missing by much. Certainly worth the conversation. From Deanna Navarro to Bob Davidson. And you see it just barely ticking the inside part of the inside corner. A call that could go either way, and it went Tyler's way. Ball and two strikes to Flowers. Off the other corner. Two and two. Sucks come into play today, eight games. In back of Cleveland. Detroit, who's taking on Toronto as we speak. Seven and a half games behind the tribe with Kansas City. Also eight games back in an identical tie for third. Check swing, ball low and in. Three and two on Flowers. It is a bunched up Central Division, that's for sure. And there's a look at it with the top. Three teams at six and four in their last ten. Kansas City, four and six. Sox are three and a half back in the wild card as Flowers pokes this to Lori. And a one, two, three frame for Jose Quintana. Back to the bat rack for the Sox down a run.
Another team pride with White Sox checking an official White Sox debit card only available at your local Wintrust Community Bank. Go to Wintrust.com slash White Sox to learn more. Wintrust Community Bank member FDIC. We were talking before the break as the Sox trail 1-0 about the American League Central and the wild card race. Sox are three and a half back. And the two wild cards right now would come from the American League East with Toronto and Boston currently in position, but the Red Sox are undergoing a lot of upheaval. Greg Kimbrell, their fine closer and one of the best in baseball, is going to undergo surgery on Monday to repair torn cartilage in his left knee. And that's a meniscus tear. He's going to be lost anywhere, and estimates go from three to six weeks. So you see Boston two games back Toronto starting to really heat it up offensively Baltimore trying to stay afloat they need a starting pitcher Toronto could use probably one of those Boston looking for one of those and the Yankees try as they might can't seem to completely fall out of it because everybody is lusting after their two left handers at the back end of the bullpen well, it's specifically on the Red Sox last night Brock Holt got hurt again sliding into second base Hanley Ramirez left the game early as well. They've picked up Michael Martinez. They've made a couple of moves already in the trade last night at about 1.40 in the morning for Brad Ziegler of the Diamondbacks. And the Diamondbacks are going to look to unload whoever they can. They come into action today, 17 games back to San Francisco, 38 and 50. Hasn't worked out for them. They've got a couple of good young building blocks. Melky Cabrera up to his old tricks with a slash to right field and a leadoff single. Tell you about our picks to click for today. You, the fan, can celebrate along with us. You've chosen Brett Laurie. Cruz got Deanna Navarro. Steve goes Todd Frazier. And J.B. Shuck, my direction. It's a three-way tie. Come on, fans. Figure it out. Let's go. So depending on this at bat, I could trade the fans Todd Frazier for Melky. Who is the I mean, representative? The trade, the trade deadline isn't until the end of July. Well, then afterward, you just have to slip them through waivers, then picks to click waivers. The ball outside to Frazier. It was one for four with a home run. His 24th yesterday. Teron throws a lot of ground balls and very durable. In excess of 200 innings the last two years. 14 and 8, 14 and 13, 11 and 8. Last three years. Frazier a drive. Deep left center field. It is gone. Number 25. Look out, Derby. Driven in runs 55 and 56. Ender Inciarte thought he had a shot at that. In fact, he felt he should have made the play. But Todd Frazier, on a very lively day at the ballpark, gives the Sox the lead. That ball stayed on the inner third. Just barely enough. Inciarte goes up. It just barely ticks off the glove, and he held it for a while, but couldn't bring it back in. Most disappointed. But the Frazier family is not. Two run shot for Todd. And the Sox have the lead. So for Turan, he's given up now his 16th home run, and that gives him the team lead over Matt Whistler, who we saw last night. And with that home run, another generous donation for the Alex Stellius family in loving memory of Ursula. By the way, no trade with the fans. I'm going to stick with my man, Todd Frazier. Smart guy. Yep. Especially after the fact. Fastball upstairs. Laurie swings through it. One and two. Most unusual defensive setup because Garcia and Ibar are almost shaking hands on the left side of the infield. There's a huge gap up the middle. That's as radical a pull hitter as we've seen in a while. The Braves played three or four guys yeah. like this last night with the third baseman and the shortstop bunched up, and Laurie gets it through anyway. How about that? 
That Red was a slider. Benito. Yeah, I mean, that was a slider low and away. And so the Braves defended him the way they should. You see how they set up. And that one just shot through the left side. So Tyler Flowers leaves the ball game. He walked over, said something to the trainer, and just left, bringing A.J. Pierzynski off the bench. He gets a standing ovation from the fans here at U.S. Cellular Field. They still remember what A.J. did for this team. They love him here. And they're getting their first chance to show it to him in a Braves uniform. A lot of A.J. fans in this ballpark. Bunch of them standing. A White Sox hero returns in an odd way with another former White Sox player leaving the game. So Deonor Navarro catcher central right now with Flowers out Pierzynski in Navarro to the plate a lot of catchers going down the injury Alex Avila on the DL Sox have had an interesting year with catchers and lately the injuries starting to pile up well, Leo Tehran almost didn't make this start he was actually pushed back because of an ingrown hair on his thigh that got infected they were concerned about it but he is the starting pitcher today now the Sox had Kevin Smith come up from Charlotte in April was in the starting lineup in Toronto hurt his back in pregame stretch and never got in for his major league debut. A look at what happened to Tyler Flowers or at least his departure. Yeah, I was watching him and I was wondering. I thought maybe at first something happened with his glove and he was going back, but then when he called out the trainer, we'll not speculate as to why he's going in the locker room, but if he's leaving this early, it can't be great. Second base, Beckham feeds Ibar. And the Braves turn two for the second time this afternoon. Two out bases clear for Avi Garcia. Sox lead thanks to the Frazier home run off of Julio Tehran. Avi at 238. 22 walks, 67 strikeouts. He is down 0 2. And Ciarde playing him into right center field. He's got 10 outfield assists. He's been just an outstanding center fielder. But he is trailing Adam Eaton by a wide margin. There's a look at Jose with Adam Eaton and leading the major leagues with 13 assists. Tana, very soft spoken left hander. Has some support today in a two run homer in the second inning. Fouled off by Garcia. He got four last time, although a couple when he left the ball game. So he's used to pitching very tough and tight games. Also, praying for some runs. 
now his offense has given him the lead. Ball at two strikes from Tehran to Garcia. Slider for strike three, and the inning's over. But Todd Frazier preparing for Derby Day with a two-run shot. Sox lead 2-1 after two. First pitch a strike from Jose Quintana to Eric Ibar, who was 0 for 5 last night with four strikeouts and a 15 hit game for the Braves. Sox leading 2 1 in the third. Well, we've mentioned in passing a couple times about Jose Quintana's all star candidacy, and you can debate all stars until the cows come home. Yeah. And in fact, they may never come home. You could keep debating even if they did come home. 1 and 2 for Ibar. Uh, Jose Quintana has the sixth best wins above replacement for any pitcher in Major League Baseball meaning as compared to the guy that you could put in his spot the average replacement player Jose Quintana gets you about three wins as a starting pitcher which is sixth best in Major League Baseball Clayton Kershaw Noah's Noah Syndergaard Jose Fernandez Johnny Cueto Corey Kluber the only five better than Quintana. His win total is well lower than theirs. And so he is not an all star. And it seems as though the chief reason is the wins and losses. Certainly a big factor. We've seen a whole lot of guys added to the all star team because of injuries, and the injuries continue to pile up. In fact, for most teams who are in contention, they're piling up at an alarming rate. Quintana earns a strikeout. Ibar chases one away. Again, there is no set of criteria for an all star. Good and fastball away, and he just blows it by him. There's no set of criteria. You can pick however you want to pick. But if wins and losses are the only thing we're using to determine the starting pitchers in the all star game, at this point in baseball, we're doing it wrong. What's well, going to happen every year, and this is consistent. But, is but, but you're going to have guys that they, they turn their back on for whatever reason. I mean, well, I understand so, that. Yeah. But as long as as long as we have solid foundational criteria, ground ball to short. Anderson is on it, and that's a tough throw. Enciarte has an infield single. 
Good effort by Tim Anderson. He did everything he could do with a quick step to his right. But Inciarte with very good speed. He gets a lot of guys on this play, but not Ender. From his knees, a one hop throw. Jose with a good pick. Just a little late. What, what I'm arguing is that in this day and age where we have so many numbers, to have one numerical criterion determining whether or not somebody's an all star, especially one that he has less control over than any of the other ones. That shouldn't be the chief reason he doesn't go to the All-Star game, and that's what it seems to be with Jose Quintana. He'd have a hard time proving that as the lone reason. However, the rest of the numbers line up that he should be there, but at this point, not much you can do. I think Adam Eaton has probably done enough when you consider his total game to also be an All-Star, but then you'd have to quantify his defensive accomplishments which have been unbelievable this year and usually in selection of all stars that's not a qualification unless the fans vote you in right right and it's a losing proposition to stump for any all star that's not made it because everybody else has an argument too. My argument isn't for Jose Quintana to make the all star game necessarily he happens to be the person in question. My argument is for not using wins and losses so importantly, so chiefly to decide an all star when he doesn't have much control over it. What do you think about that? I think we're going to change everything next year. You do. And go strictly by computers, and then your well, favorite player will make it. No, I mean, I understand that particular argument, but you have a whole list of guys that have a few numbers that are overwhelming. But it comes down to how many pitchers do you want on your ball club? And actually, in an all star game, what I prefer, and of course, this is for the starting pitchers, but if you're going to use guys for an inning, my preference would be to load your team with relievers. And the principal reason is there are going to be relievers in the all star game. There's one starter, going to be a lot of relievers. And now that the game is so important, giving you home field advantage in the World Series, you get some quality relievers in succession for one or the other ball club. You got a really good shot. Right? You got a double play from Abreu's Keister. I'll get a note out on that. Two one Sox after two and a half. And it's a very quick double play and out of the inning. Base runner here can't do anything because balls hit behind him and Jose just catches it and he doubles him up. So the NCRT base hit went for not. 
third double play of our game. Two on the ground, one the line drive variety. And after a triple play yesterday, who knows what we'll see. As the Sox have turned three triple plays already this year before the All-Star break. J.B. Shuck, first at bat of the day for the nine hitter for the Sox. To, to wrap the conversation that we were having previously, you got to win ball. I mean, you have to win games. As a team, you have to win games. But if you could imagine holding players responsible in other sports for things that they have less control of, that seems to be what's happening to Quintana. But you can make an argument as a former pitcher that you have control over your wins and losses maybe a little bit more than the numbers would suggest yeah. right I mean some games you do certainly and there's other games where you're pitching as well as you can possibly pitch only to see either no runs or a defensive play that is not made the more the bullpen gives it up after you're leading late I mean if you have as many no decisions as Jose has had you get to the point where you don't expect them you never do that you expect to go out and win each and every time but you'd have to say that he might be the world's most unlucky pitcher at this point because you can make a case for his all star candidacy any of the last three years and you would be fully within your rights judging by the numbers. Two and two for shock. From Julio Tehran. Bash to center field J.B. Shuck continues to hit the ball well from that nine spot for the Sox. Hey Chicagoland viewers, it's time for the Subway third inning triple play promotion. Text Subway 3 to 97999 right now and the 300th texture will win a $30 gift card to Subway restaurants in the Chicagoland area. Subway, fresh is what we do. Tim Anderson one for one. Trying to move along Chuck and construct a rally for the Sox here in the third. Left center field falling quickly. Oh my, Darno could not make the play. He drops the ball because in this game the ground can cause a fumble. So Chase Darno came across, made a big effort. But if you're a base runner, in this case JB Shuck looking out at it, his body actually is screening you from taking a look. And that will go as a base hit. We'll check it again off the end of the bat a sinking line drive Darno comes over. He's got the ball in the glove. And then it sneaks out of the glove. That's twice now today a Braves player had the ball in the glove it popped out and led to at least something for the Sox on the Frazier Homer in Ciarte. Got leather on baseball, but could not put it away. And yet again, a multi hit game for Tim Anderson. It's number 13 of his White Sox career in 27 games. Really been a remarkable start for him. And the prevailing wisdom, and prevailing because you hear a lot of people talking about it, is but he's only had one walk. I mean, but he only has one walk. And his on base percentage isn't that much higher than. His batting average, and all of that is true. But this is his first go round. He's played less than a month games wise. He's hitting over 300. You just let him play exactly as he's playing and see how things work out. Right now, he's not overwhelmed by anybody. Well, and you know, people evolve as baseball players once they hit the major league level. It's different, right? Yeah. Look, he's got to do what got him here. That's the first thing you do. And then you see if you have success or if you fail. Only after some prolonged failure do you try to change things. But right now, you don't want him to change anything. Run expectancy. First to second, nobody out. Sox hitters have played at least a run 53% of the time. And that's not all that good with league average at 62%. Eaton Abreu Cabrera on the way for the Sox trying to 
make that number a bit more robust. Side shot for Eaton foul. It was a slider. Tehran was trying to get it in out of his hands. Adam got the head of the bat out, but it was well fouled. Ball and two strikes for Eaton. Shuck at second, Anderson at first. Another foul ball. Going off to the left side, and Adam Eaton with good speed beat out a potential double play ground ball in the first inning. He's only grounded into five of them this year, 337 at bats. Another foul ball. The eighth pitch of the at bat forthcoming. Had a pretty quiet pitch count wise first two innings. Ratcheted up here in the third. Popped it up. Foul ground. Garcia battling the sun as out number one in this third inning. They feel fly roll as the wind pushed that ball back into the field of play. So the guys on that field have to be aware they can look up at the flags but it's really affecting everything and it's blowing it toward the right field corner and toward the right field stand. Sometimes those flags are deceiving in this ballpark. They are but today it appears that they're more accurate than most. Sometimes they're blowing across and the wind swirls and still takes it out. Toward right and right center. Runners are off. That's and a Tehran got caught in between. He balked. That's a balk. You've got to step back off the mound. He didn't do it. So a heads up play by J.B. Shuck noticing that Julio Tehran wasn't looking back at him. Now watch. Takes his eyes off Shuck. Shuck goes. And Tehran starts in his motion. Only to realize, wait a second, um, I believe I can't do that. That's right, you can't. Both runners move up. Sox will take it, second and third. Abreu and Tehran. Punch to center and down. Stop sign at third. Sox get a run. Shuck scores. Anderson to third. Abreu drives in. The Sox third run. So the balk is costly. And that's run batted in. Number 52 for Jose. Try to get that fastball in on his hands. It was over the inside part of the plate. And Jose, as he did so very well the first two years of his career, takes the inside pitch. Brings his hands in, still gets a good part of the bat on it, and runners at the corners, and now a two run lead. And maybe more. Just one out, Melky Cabrera, who's four for six in the series, and volleyed a ball to right for a single last time. Breaking ball strike. And here's where this particular statistic comes into play. Six wild pitches this year from. Julio Tehran 
did commit his first walk. But the six wild pitches leads the team in that dubious department. Smoke to right. Melky Cabrera lashes another hit, scoring a run. Abreu to third. He is saved. Melky's starting to drive in some big runs consistently. That's RBI number 41. That was a rocket to right field. And Jose had a pretty good idea about where that ball was going and where Frank Coor was. And even though Frank coor has got a good arm, once he ducks and slips, he knows that Frank Coor has to go to his left. And going away from the throw, he couldn't get it the third in time. Back to back hits four singles in the inning a balk as well Sox have a pair of runs and here's Todd Frazier to take strike one. Todd at least was thinking about laying it down with Garcia way back at third base. Well, Todd has been a massive pole hitter this year and they have him shifted that way. Those are the only two guys on the right side of the infield. Freeman and the runner Melky Cabrera. That time looked like he was trying to go to the vacant right side because the closest man to that play would have been Dan Iasonia, the second base umpire. You see nobody home with Freeman having to hold Melky close and Beckham playing on the third base side of second. Two strikes on Frazier. Toward right center field for Todd, and this ball is gap worthy. Abreu scores, Melky stops at third. The surge continues on a Frazier RBI double. That's three driven in, 57 for the year, and lo and behold, Todd Frazier goes the opposite way. That's going to bring Roger McDowell out from the dugout. Nobody is up in the brave pen as Julio Turan gets one up. Frazier takes it the opposite way, and the doubles are starting to mount. And don't look now, but the Sox have scored five runs for Jose Quintana. It's an embarrassment of riches. So now he should be an all-star because the Sox scored for him. Makes sense to me. Well, Second and third, one out. I will say with the injuries, and the National League just added three players. With injuries piling up, you never really know how that's going to work out. But Pomerantz, a pitcher with Marte and Bruce, all added to the National League squad and the Braves. And former Detroit Tiger, Ian Kroll, loosening up. Infield in at all four positions. For Brett Laurie, who singled to left last time and takes ball one in the dirt. Brett's hit streak now at 11 with that second inning single. One and one. Todd Frazier came into the game one for 11 against Julio Tehran from his Cincinnati days and has hit a couple of balls very hard. Buzz the tower two and one. ground to Ron with a rather snippy bluff to third and a throw out of Lori for up number two. The a little cranky after this happening. I should think so and I don't think Melky was thinking about running on that one. But just in case. And 
take a look at Julio Tehran as he gets a one hopper back to him. And then, you thinking about this, Melky? Nope. Okay. He takes care of it at first. Two out for Navarro. Fastball away at 92 from Tehran. Navarro's driven in eight in his last nine games and a plum chance to really blow the doors off this game here in the third. That time he got a slider that didn't do a whole lot, stayed over the outer third of the plate and fouled it straight back. Ball to strike on Navarro. Sox with a three run inning thanks to a grand total of five hits in this third. One and two, Adam way out front. Another off speed pitch, rippled to first. Freeman handles it, and the inning's over. But the Sox tap Tehran for three. Five one after three innings today. TV.com sponsored by Jeff Bukovic, your local nationwide insurance agent serving the area for 38 years. To join the nation, visit JeffBook.com because nationwide is on your side. Well, Sox math is coming up. Let's show the folks what they can win today, Mr. Stone, off our prize show. Well, appropriately, we've got a Melky t-shirt as well as the Todd Frazier bobblehead. That was from his days in, in the minor leagues in yeah. Louisville. The Altoids, the dog you can't have, the gnome, of course, that's off limits, and lots of other great things, including that's Lord of the Flies. Lord Part of the, of the Flies. The Sox Math Book Club continues. Right. The, the so, Frank Thomas Grill Book went away. Somebody won the Grill Book. And the statue. And the statue. Statue yep. went also. Statue's gone. Just before the All Star break, we're doing a little bit of rest and relaxation, Sox Math. It's been a little easier than the rest of the season the last couple days. Just to ease you into the All Star break. I've been noticing that it has been relatively easy. Hey, well, it's, you know, it's it's kind of a thanks for everybody for playing. We're gonna <laughs> ease off the gas pedal just briefly for the moment before the break, and then we'll really hammer you after the All Star break. Gordon Beckham has had a very good short series to this point. Three hits yesterday and a home run in the first. 
little bit high three and one for Beckham. You know if if we ever get a the, the rule of Sox Mad Book Club by the way if we ever get a 10 run game or more Steve will read from the book on the prize shelf that day at some point during the game. Sox Mad Book Club. Here's your Sox Math question for the day today. Hashtag Sox Math on Twitter. First correct answer wins a prize off the prize shelf. Take the number of off days the White Sox have during the All-Star break. Multiply the number of consecutive years Chris Sale has been named to the All-Star team. Add the number of consecutive years Todd Frazier has gone to the Home Run Derby. That's your question. Even I have that one. So Freeman, 0 for 1. He's a team leader in home runs with 15. He's driven in 33. He is their best player. Got off to a very slow start this year, but lately starting to come alive. And Quintana's fallen behind 2 and 0, with the outfield shading toward left center field. Freeman bounced into a 4 3 ground out last time, so a double play would be certainly nice. As Quintana is battling his control for the first time this afternoon. And Don Cooper is getting ready to maybe make a trip to the mound, depending on the resolution of this at bat. There's a strike. Freeman is the third best left hander against left handed pitchers by batting average in Major League Baseball. He's hitting 331 against left handed pitching. And really, the key to that is the right shoulder. If the right shoulder flies open, if you don't stay closed with that front side, you're not going to hit the ball away. It's impossible to cover the outside part of the plate. Freeman does it pretty well. Three two. He goes down swinging. Quintana disposes of Freeman for his fourth strikeout. Threw a high fastball by him at 94 miles an hour and came all the way back from 3 0 down to get a big out. Tardy on that swing and you see the classic uppercut swing of a guy that can hit a lot of home runs. He doesn't hit the ball up very well. One out one on. Mark Kekas for strike one. Nick Markake has three homers the last two days as you were talking about in his first at bat Steve first time he's done that since August of 06 as he shifts this ball out to left and Melky Cabrera for the second out of the top of the fourth. Friday August 5th come see your Chicago White Sox take out the Baltimore Orioles at 7 10 p.m. All fans are invited to stay for a post game fireworks show presented by Atletico Physical Therapy Atletico Physical Therapy better for everybody purchase tickets today at WhiteSox.com or call 866 Sox game wouldn't be a more beautiful day it's up 78 degrees not a cloud in the sky lovely blue all across our viewing area, at least mine and yours. I'm sure somebody's watching where it's raining. Fly ball, Frank Core, left field. Melky at the wall, no play. It's gone. Jeff Frank Core with his seventh career hit against Quintana in 12 tries. That also was a rolling breaking ball, reminiscent of the same pitch that Beckham hit out in the first inning. That one cuts the lead to two. The leadoff walk. Gordon Beckham comes home to score. And Jeff Frank Poor hits just his fourth home run of the year. Driving in runs 22 and 23. And there is that rolling breaking ball. This one 
did not bite. Rolled up there, it stayed in the middle of the plate, and gone. So the Braves now, with the two homers today, and the three yesterday, have five in the last two games in this ballpark after 47 home runs in their first 86 games of the year. They were saving up for a not so rainy day. Well, Len is moving into a brand new ballpark next year. And so their days at Turner Field are numbered. That's a pitcher's park, always has been. The third, Todd Frazier, and the inning's over. Braves get two, though, on a two out, two run homer for Jeff Francoeur. It's 5 3 Sox. with the lead over the Braves. Sox fans join us as the White Sox take on the Detroit Tigers Saturday July 23rd 6 10 p.m. First 20,000 fans get a 1976 Navy blue throwback jersey presented by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. Purchase tickets today at WhiteSox.com or call 866-SOX-GAME. 5-3 is your score. As the Braves have put two across in the top of this inning. Uh, the Frank Poor home run. Last night, Whistler went five, and they had to go to the bullpen and get some pretty good work out of that pen. A very offensive night for both clubs. Sox who came in with five straight winning series. You got to take this one today. To try to make it six tomorrow, and then it's the break. Two and zero on Garcia. Sox will be off for four days. Then Friday will appear in lovely Anaheim to play the Angels. Seattle for three after that. Back home for the Tigers and the Cubs. Before two at Wrigley. Then more road fun. Play a lot of road games in early August. Well, there is a stretch where they better be road warriors because it starts with the Cubs and then carries all the way to the 19th of August with just three home games. I may forget what you sound like, at least in person for a while. I'm not going to see you other than. Three games I'm watching on my television at home. Yeah, you can listen to the texts that I send you. 
You're going to audio tweet? Try to do that on occasion. Yeah. Yes. Two and two for Garcia. To shortstop, tough hop for Ibar. He is on it, and Eric Ibar with a dandy of a play to retire Garcia. There's some sentiment around Atlanta that Eric Ibar would be an ideal trade candidate because he's been a good player for a long time. He got off to a very bad start. This is a tough one hopper with a lot of overspin. And he got it across. Now, the shortstop they brought to the major leagues, Antleton Simmons, was traded away. They realized that he was going to make a great deal of money in this game and didn't think they would be ready to win before they had to pay him extensively. Drive to right field for Shuck toward the pole and the foul ball. The wind not his friend on that one as it hugged the line most of the way, but then it hooked foul. There you see the flags and it is blowing toward the corner. Chicks dig the long ball, flags dig the foul ball. Strike two on Shuck. A lob to center field. Ibar, long run, and Eric Ibar has been a busy man. Two out. JB took that one right off the ground. Trying to ease it over the heads of the infielders, but couldn't quite get it there. Best thing that happened with Eric Ibar this year was to go on the DL, had a chance to get in a little better shape, and came back swinging the bat a whole lot better than he did before he went on the disabled list. It was a bruised right foot in late May that had him on the shelf. Back on June 12th, and before the game yesterday, was hitting 303 since that DL stint. Tough day yesterday, 0 for 5, four strikeouts, and he's punched out once this afternoon. Ball two for Anderson, who singled twice, scored once, and has his 13th multi hit game as a White Sox player. Out of offense in the early going, yet Tehran has kept it. To just 64 pitches to this point. So he's not walking anybody. And the offense has come early in the count. Native of Cartagena in Colombia. About half an hour away from where Jose Quintana grew up. Two and two on Anderson. First time two Colombians are the starting pitchers in a Major League Baseball game. Official word on Tyler Flowers is a left hamstring strain, so. That's what took him out of the ball game in favor of A.J. Pierzynski. Anderson left center field. Enciarte squeezes the final out of this home fourth. One, two, three inning for Julio Tehran. To the fifth we go in a 5-3 score.
the weight out of banking with Fifth Third's faster mobile app. You know what? It's a tremendous app. You can scan your checks. Yeah. You can transfer funds. Yes. But not to Steve. I was going to say, I was going to ask you if you could transfer some to anybody. No, you'd what you're like. going to ask me. You see the green stuff and you start to. <laughs> well, the money portion of the green stuff. If there's a salad near Steve Stone, he asks for a restraining order. A.J. Pierzynski to the batter's box for the first time today. In for Tyler Flowers, who was injured a couple of innings ago. A.J. was slated to start the game tomorrow anyway, getting some advanced play. Nothing in two on Pierzynski. Ball and two strikes. Don't have to tell anybody around here about the years between 05 and 12. For A.J. Pierzynski, a feisty character, a power bat at times, and beloved. Two and two. Braves brought him back this year because they really didn't have any veterans. And they felt that A.J. in the clubhouse, where he's been very good, by the way, would really help the ball club. There you look at A.J. As Quintana has extended this at bat after going on top quickly. Three and two from Q. Toward third, Frazier on the backhand. Jump throw. That is a well done effort by Todd Frazier. AJ bidding for a base hit, a defensive swing, and a good smother of the short hop. Good pick on the other end. And AJ bidding for one of the few infield hits he will have gotten in recent vintage. Cut down at first base. One out, and Ibar flashes a bunt and up for strike one. He wanted at least an appeal, but the plate umpire Bob Davidson made the call on his own without checking in with Lance Barrett at first. Q shot first base side. Literally a Q shot. Two down. Here's your Sox math answer for today. Number of days the Sox have office for. Consecutive years for sale is five. Frazier will go to the home run derby a third time. 23 Madman OTL is your winner. And there's been some speculation that the answer to the third part is two because Frazier has only gone to two home run derbies. So we may we may fire some question writers and give a prize to somebody who had the first 22 answer as well because of an ambiguity in today's question. Stick to your guns. You can't be that flexible. No, it was it was it was an ambiguous writing of the question. Oh, We're very fair. Operator error. Fox man. Yeah, because Don't I've blame got, the switchboard. I've got all kinds of different answers. You do? Here. Yeah, because of the difficulties and the ambiguity. It was also confusing. I've well, got 22 and 27. Number of different people doing that. Well, in no way is 27 correct. Ball to NCRTA. Two and one. So Madman OTL wins a prize and will send something to the first 22 as well. Two balls, two strikes on NC Arte as Quintana searches for his second clean one, two, three inning. I'll let you break that to Dan Scott because I'm not going to tell him that your ambiguity cost him a shot at the prize show. Who's Dan Scott? Well, he's one of the people Man who 20. guessed 27. Oh, he's got 27. Yes. Yeah, well, 27 will be an answer at some point, <laughs> just not today. Keep tweeting it, Dan. 3 2. 
Lofted to left. Melky on the run back. He's there. Fun with Melky and left. He was playing in and to dance back. No harm done. Five three. You can manage the game along with Robin by logging on to WGNTV.com and click on the WGN Sports Game Zone banner for the latest stats and information. Sox Game Zone is powered by Dodd Camera. Family owned for 125 years, handling all your photographic needs. Dodd Camera, where the focus is on you. Do they sell photographic memories at Dodd Camera? That would cost a, a little bit more. Adam Eaton, the batter, to lead off the fifth. I think it was it was 60 minutes a couple years ago. Did a feature piece on this guy who had a photographic memory. Mary Lou Henner was part of it too. She's got one. That was a total recall of everything that happened in their lives yeah. every day. Pretty every amazing, episode actually. of Taxi. She's got it. Grounded foul from Eaton. Be nice to get Adam aboard because the boys in the middle, and we've been talking about the guys in the middle consistently, and today they're getting the job done. Ray Cabrera and Frazier hitting it well. Adam Eaton's mother Robin is here. Got a chance to chat with her very briefly in the elevator on the way up to the press box earlier today. Great feature on Adam and his mother for Mother's Day during the season. And how unruly sometimes Adam was, but how much Robin kind of kept him in line and their uh, wonderful relationship they've had for a long time. I'm sure his mother hopes that his young son gives him all the pleasure that Adam gave to her. Little Braden. Three and one. He shows butt, and Adam takes ball four. First walk for Julio Tehran this afternoon. Sox fans, Sunday, July 24th, the strikeout stroke day at U.S. Cellular Field. Join the White Sox in their effort to raise awareness of stroke warning signs and the importance of acting FASC. Purchase your tickets today at whitesox.com slash strikeout stroke. Sox have tried to run a couple of times. Uh, Tyler Flowers haven't yet tried on A.J. Pierzynski. League has tried 36 times. And they have been successful 
every time but five. Eaton holds. There is ball number one. There's a strike one and one for Abreu who drove in a run in the third with an RBI single part of that three run third for the Sox. Eaton holds Abreu with a foul ball, one and two. And Abreu was up in the first inning. Eaton was at first and had a couple of bags stolen. Abreu fouled a pair of pitches off. And we've yet to see Eaton go in this at bat for Jose. Braves are one of the few teams that actually play him as a pull hitter in the infield. Eaton is safe. He was leaning towards second base and just barely got back under the tag of Freeman. Another throw on him. Able to get back well ahead of the tag this time. Two balls, two strikes out of Brayu. Adam does want to go. This is probably a very good time to. Why is that? Because there's not going to be a pitch out, and you figure he's going to use either a high tight fastball or a slider low and out of the zone. Either one difficult to throw. There he goes. High in the air, left side. I bar after it. Darno as well, and Darno grabs out number one. He got the slider, but that one stayed over the inside part of the plate. And Adam, as he's done so many times, has to retreat. He might need some oxygen at first base. Been running quite a bit fruitlessly so far this afternoon and retreating. One out, one on. Melky Cabrera, who's two for two with a pair of singles, a run at RBI. Julio Tehran. Has thrown more to first base than he did to Jose Abreu in that last at bat. Well, he knows Adam wants to steal a base. And he knows he's got a good lead. I've 
time he gave him his best move. It did border on a ball. He's already balked once today, but that was with runners in motion. Eaton holds. There's a strike to Melky, who twice on an 0 1 pitch has provided a hit to right field today. Vancouver is way back in right field. Now he's moving ever closer to the line in right. The gaps in right center. Sox leading 5 3. The Braves with the most recent runs in this game, a two run homer in the fourth. Oh, and two on Melky now. After a change up away, throws a slow curveball. Both out of the zone, however, he got the benefit of the call on the first pitch. Grounded to first, Freeman taps the bag. Eaton is caught up, and Freeman runs him down and knocks him down and knocks down the socks and knocks Eaton's socks off. Sixth inning coming. 5 3. Three double plays turned by the Braves. The Sox still lead five to three, however, into the top of the sixth and Chase Darno against Jose Quintana with strike number one, Ford over. Sox centered play today, eight games back of Cleveland in the AL Central. And with a win today, would put themselves in position to win their sixth straight series with a victory tomorrow Cleveland plays later on home against the Yankees that's a 410 central time start any Salazar going to the mound for the Indians against CC Samantha Dardo on three pitches strikes out he also looked at a fastball in the first inning and he looks at another one here so he gets ahead what was that fastball a little off the outside corner, but Bob Davidson has been giving both teams about an inch or so. 
certainly off the outside corner, occasionally the inside. Are you of the belief they've taken a mile then? Give them an inch. Not yet. No. But history has shown that if you stay around the plate, the umpire is going to give you an ever wider plate, which hitters really dislike. Right field, Adam Eaton. Out number two. The Braves were very, very good at that in the 1990s. Glavin and Maddox, certainly, and John Smoltz. Great Rick. pitching staff with Steve Avery. Yeah. Unbelievable. I'd like to send along birthday greetings to Brian Ruby. He turns 49 today. He's the grandson of the ancient mariner, Jack Ruby. Didn't want to get him a birthday present, so suggest that I mentioned that his birthday gift was the mention. Happy birthday, Brian. What do you get for the man who has everything? A mention. A mention. No gifts. On those Braves teams, by the way, Greg Maddox, the other day, Baseball America reported, Greg Maddox is going to be pitching coach at UNLV. I think it's great to work with college pitchers. Maddox, with unbelievable knowledge, he was a cerebral pitcher from the time he came to the major leagues and made that first adjustment. A fastball that moved away from left hand hitters and had the majority of the plate to develop a cutter to allow him to get it inside to the lefties. And after that, well, 355 wins later, the Hall of Fame, but he has a lot of wisdom to impart to those youngsters. His son is at UNLV, so he's going to coach his son. He's a sophomore. He's worked with a lot of front offices around baseball. As you would expect, a lot of people want to have the benefit of his expertise. Two and two from Quintana. To left field, Melky Cabrera at the wall. It is up and over. Freddie Freeman goes deep for the second day in a row, and Melky can only take a seat. It's 5-4. I think Melky got hurt. And hopefully that right shoulder is going to be okay. But he reached over, got to the fence as quickly as he could, reached up, got tangled up with the top of the wall, and Freddie Freeman with a 16th home run, 34th driven in, and he goes the opposite way. He does this very well. And Melky back tries to time it. The ball looked like it hit off the back of the wall and out. I think Melky is still shaken up somewhat in left field. Well, he came in hand first, and then there was a jolt as that hand went into the wall. That's three home runs given up by Jose Quintana. And the suddenly muscular Braves are hitting the ball out of the park. Trickling through for Marquecas. On a heading line to right field. So, two out single and Frank Cora coming up. Entering play today, the Sox had allowed only 90 homers. That was eighth best in Major League Baseball, and that included three from Atlanta in yesterday's game. The Sox don't give them up much, the Braves don't hit them much, and they've come together and done the opposite. Well, unfortunately, when you don't throw ground balls in this ballpark, you're going to give up the long ball. Well, there's been no better example of that than that game of the Blue Jays when the Sox hit seven homers and that first ball that was hit in the left field, it was drifting and drifting and drifting, and you just know from the jump what the park's going to play like. One and one on Frank Core. Jose has now given up 12 home runs. Still not a high total. In 116 innings. Tying run at first. And a fly ball toward the right field corner. This is foul.
one and two to the free swinging and Jeff Francoeur. He's been pretty much the same hitter since he came into the league. A very difficult man to walk. 13 walks this year. Just under 200 at bats. In the dirt, Navarro keeps it in front. Two balls, two strikes. Throw to first. Starting pitcher the day that Jeff Francoeur made his major league debut was John Smoltz for the Atlanta Braves on July 7, 2005. Interesting career for John Smoltz, who was a quality starting pitcher, only to then move and become a closer and a good one. And he came out of the Detroit organization as a very young player. Traded to Atlanta for Doyle Alexander. Lori again to his left. He scoops it and he throws him out. That 86 is the Braves in the sixth. Lori, a fine play. It's 5 4. Back in the second inning. Melky Cabrera with a base hit. Todd Frazier came up. And Ciarte has his glove on it briefly, but cannot deny the 25th home run of the year. Four drive of the game. Todd Frazier starting to heat it up before the break. A second straight bada bing bada boom for you. That one just made it. Because Enciarte had that in the glove for a long time before it finally trickled out. Strike one to Frazier. It's two for two with that home run. He's got an RBI double as well, part of a five hit, three run inning for the Sox. Waves at a breaking ball from Tehran, who's had some staying power despite early troubles today. We give up two in the second, three in the third, and was touched up for a total of nine hits. The last two innings, he's been very good. One and two to Frazier. 
Todd will face off against Carlos Gonzalez of Colorado in the first round of that home run derby. 1 8. 2 7 3 6 and 4 5 will go at it in the first round leading up to a final Todd's amped for it too. I mean he loves the home run derby. Well, I love the fact that he is so excited about it when a whole lot of other people feel that it disrupts their swing and disrupt that one as he goes down on strikes but a home run and a double today. Charlie's not going to snap off a breaking ball at him either at the home run derby. Sticks and stone today where we quiz Steve on his own career. How about Roland Office? A lot of people don't remember Roland Office. I'm one of them. No, actually he was a little left-hand hitter. And he fell into that category of being a little left-hand hitter that I probably had trouble with. I don't think he hit many, if any, home runs. I'd like to think not anyway. So we'll see, but I'll say that Roland did a pretty good job. Pretty good? Mm, yeah. To the tune of what's your batting average? 640. No, actually, he probably hit 320 or 330, which is basically what left handers started with, and they went from there. I'm just happy that there was no Rico Cardi in the equation. Well, the way you're stumping for him, you're doing some office politicking. One and two on Laurie. He was one of the better players named Office that I remember. Yeah. But we'll have to see. One and two for Laurie, who's on an 11 game hit streak with his single to left to the second inning. Sox trying to pad this lead that the Braves are chiseling away at. Fastball away, two and two. Sox last hit was that Frazier double in the third. 2 2 from Tehran. Grounded first base side, just foul. It snuck by the bag to the right of it. Yeah, that one stayed fair a long time. But at the end, darted to the right. Take a look at how long this ball was fair. It's fair, it's not fair. That's not fair. You don't think? Nope. Unfortunately. You could make a little bit of an argument that the ball nearly clipped that front of the bag. Very nearly. You could make that. And once again, you'd be wrong. Get but the you physics could make professor that. out yes. here. Talk about refraction. Two and two for Lori. He tests the pull side. High bar for out number two. All right, let's see how you did against Roland Office. The question marks become numbers. Oh, he was one for seven against you. Wow, but I walked him three times. You, are, you walked a lot of Atlanta Braves, didn't you? Well, a wonderful on base percentage of 400. Yeah, Roland wasn't one of their leading offensive players. They had some good ones over the years. Well, that's the trouble with putting him on. You walk him, and here come the boppers. And there were some very good ones. In the air from Navarro and foul. We have footage, officially, of you facing Roland Office. Very upright stance. Here's Stone to the plate. And it's a ground ball. And the defense nearly causes trouble for the young stone. You look frustrated. I wanted to, want to take through. the first baseman out of that game. Fly ball punch to left. Navarro didn't get all of it. Darno on the warning track for out number three. Even reflecting you blame <laughs> the defense. Five four after six today.
game. Trying to protect a one run lead. Quintana goes six, turns it over to the bullpen. And Zach comes on. He's been a busy man. 44 appearances. Zach Duke to Adonis Garcia, who is 0 for 2. Quintana, six innings, five hits, four earned runs, all on homers. A walk and five strikeouts. He is the pitcher of record. And the bullpen is going to cover nine outs. Duke in search of that first out against Garcia, then A.J. Pierzynski and Eric Ibar. On the way up for the Braves. Whisked foul by Garcia. Looks like the pen is going to get to work. Not only Ian Kroll for the Braves, but the Sox pen starts to work. Wrap to short. Anderson one down check in during your visit to U.S. Cellular Field using MLB.com ballpark the official U.S. Cellular Field app for your iPhone and Android smartphone perfectly complements your trip with ballpark maps and sessions guides check in prizes and more download MLB.com ballpark today or visit whitesocks.com slash ballpark app when you check in 50 times you will get a golden this sale bobblehead. Now we have one of those, and we're going to start a contest where you can get one of those after AJ makes it out. Right there. Two down. But check in 50 times and you get the gold for sale bobblehead. Or write the most creative Sox math question. Submit it to Jason. And he will be the sole arbiter to determine if you get this very handsome, handsome gold statue. Judge, jury, and executioner. Strike one to Ibar from Duke. Strike two to Ibar from Duke. Quick pitch down low, one and two for Ibar, who has scuffled in the series, came in swinging a strong bat, but 0 for 7 with five strikeouts since yesterday. Dazzling breaking ball, grounded foul. Dropped down sidearm and then tried to drop it low and in out of the strike zone. One more slider. Nope. Fastball. Tied it over the outside corner. It was an off-speed pitch. He just missed by a wide margin. Two and two. There's the breaking ball for strike three. And a one-two-three inning for Duke in the seventh. Stretch time, it is 5-4, Sox over the Braves.
Major Leagues. There's five games tonight and the rest this afternoon. A combination of some underweight. Detroit has won their ball game, cooling off Toronto in Toronto. Early on, Arizona, San Francisco, Cincinnati, Miami, the Mets in Washington, and another key series between those two before the All Star break and the Cubs in Pittsburgh after a loss last night. St. Louis with a couple more injuries to a team that is already fair to partly injured. Rosenthal, their closer, with a hamstring issue, and Ian Kroll comes on. For the 28th time, he's 1 0, find the area of 278, actually throwing the ball very well out of the pen for the Braves. So Kroll will face Garcia, Shuck, and Anderson in this seventh inning for the Sox. Another injury for St. Louis, Matt Holliday was scrapped from the opening lineup. So despite winning that ball game, the injuries for the Cardinals mounting. It's a fastball at 94 from Kroll to Garcia. You had your chance to go to the U of A, University of Arizona. But somebody offered you 925,000, what would you do? Grounded a short eye bar, can't handle it. This play, it looked like he should have made, but he kind of nonchalanted it once he got there. This ball's hit hard. Sidebar is right there. And kind of lets the ball just scoot away. That's error number eight for Ibar, but that's in 69 games, so it hasn't been a bad defensive year. Uh. If offered that, as you yes. said, to go to the University of Arizona or take the money, as there's a bunt third base side and safe. Ball gets away. Chuck is safe. Garcia to third. Sox have second and third, and nobody out of this seventh inning. That probably is going to be a base hit, and Freddie Freeman could absolutely be injured. I've seen a lot of first basemen wind up with either a broken wrist. Or a hyperextended elbow on a similar play as Garcia threw that right into the path of JB Shuck. It goes base hit E5. Runners move up, and this team not having a great year, but they could ill afford to lose Freddie Freeman for any length of time. This ball hugs the line. It is going to stay fair. Eventually, Garcia gets to it and then throws it away. He's got a strong arm. He has very little angle on this one, and J.B. Shuck knocks the glove off of Freeman. Second and third, nobody out in field in. And ball one to Anderson as the defense unravels behind Ian Kroll. Kroll decided to take the catch that the Oakland A's offered. And off he went into pro ball, throwing up a Cubs fan. Bounce it a third, Garcia, four, out number one. These are huge runs in scoring position. And I'm at Adam Eaton, who does love to bunt. There's a lefty lefty situation for him. If he gets out a good bunt, it really doesn't matter where Garcia winds up and it actually turns out to be a Gar Garcia Garcia matchup at third a lot of chances here for Eaton to get at least a run haul a lot of choices infield in at all four positions ball one kicks up dirt fastball to 95 from Kroll Ian Kroll from Hinsdale, Illinois, just down the road. A dart for a strike, one and one to Eaton.
Outside two and one for Eaton. Roll came over from Detroit Tigers. Along with Gabe Spire for Cameron Maben. It was last year, November 20. Two and two. This is where Avi has got to come down the line. He can get off the third base bag about the same distance as Adonis Garcia is away from the bag. You'd have to figure a breaking ball is forthcoming. And Kroll throws hard enough where he could bury a slider. He does have a wild pitch this year. Two balls, two strikes. On the ground, shortstop, Ibar home, Garcia out, two away. It was a contact play and anything hit Avi was coming home so with the infield in Ibar right there at the cut of the grass makes a good solid throw and A.J. Kurzinski with the tag and no chance for Avi to get close to the plate. That leaves it up to Jose Abreu who has Singled in a run. He's scored a run. He's bounced into a double play. And he's flied out to left. Eaton at first. Shuck at third. And the dirt. Check swing, ball high. 2 0 on Abreu. And finally, the appeal to Lance Baird, who says, Nope, he didn't go. Took a while to get over there. Two balls, no strikes. Kroll. And the dirt again, 3-0 and on Abreu with Melky Cabrera. Scheduled next. Well, you'd certainly think that Jose would have the 3-0 green light. Matt Albert going in the pen. Jose had the 3-0 green light last night. Four runs down in the ninth inning leading it off, and you figure if he got one to his liking, he's going to let it all go here. There it is, ground ball to short. Ibar retires the side. The Braves wriggle free from a jam. Ian Kroll gets out of it. 5 4 Sox after seven.
Sox leading 5-4 into the eighth inning we go. Zach Duke to the left-hander in Ciarte to open the inning for strike one. Duke a 1-2-3 seventh with two ground outs to short and a strikeout. Ball and a strike to Inciarte, who singled back in the third. All the Braves' runs today have come on homers. Dragged to second, Lori awaits and throws out Inciarte. Duke gets out number one. Let's take a look at our Honda game summary. It's a five to four game. Sox have doubled them up in hits. The Braves have made the only two airs, Jose Quintana. Pitcher of record went six innings, five hits, four earned runs, courtesy of the long ball, and Cabrera and Frazier have combined to have enough big day. That's brought to you by Honda. Start something special with a great deal on a Honda. Now it's your Honda dealers, so off goes Zach Duke. And we'll step out and be back after these messages. Came out for the 38th time. It's two and four ERA, 5.17. So a fine job by Zach Duke, and now he turns it over to Matt Albers. There you look at the numbers. He guns in a strike to Darno, who's nothing for three. Couple of strikeouts, looking at a double play lineout. Sox bullpen up and going. Nate Jones, the right-hander. It's like Dan Jennings, the left-hander. Jennings up you would think for the left hander Freeman but Freddie Freeman has hit lefty significantly better this year than he's hit right handers. Fair ball down the line. Darno has wheels and he is into second with a one out double. This one taken right down the line. It's over the middle of the plate, and Frazier well off the line. Two schools of thought on that. There's a lot of folks that want to play the lines in a no double set. There's other people who feel that there are more balls that go to your left than your right in that situation. Check swing grounder foul for Beckham. Sox led in this game 
five to one in the third. Braves got two of the fourth on a Frank Poor two run homer. Then one more in the sixth on a Freeman homer. And this ball is shocked foul down the line by Beckham. With strike two. Family Sunday is presented by Coca Cola at U.S. Cellular Field. Feature tickets as low as five dollars in the upper level and fifteen bucks in the lower level. And special kid focused activities throughout the ballpark. Plus, parking is available for only ten dollars. Visit WhiteSox.com slash Sundays to purchase your tickets today. Another Sunday coming up tomorrow. Sox in hopes that that will be for a series win. They need this win today. And Beckham checks his swing on a breaking ball low outside. Darno at second, one out. On the ground, Anderson has time and has out number two. It's up to Freeman for the Braves and Marcakis maybe thereafter. You could walk Freeman here without much damage done, likely. I would think they're going to walk him. If you have a choice of left handers you want to face, Freddie Freeman would be the one man that you decide is not going to beat you. Which brings into focus why Jennings is up. Markakis is a 231 hitter against lefties, 270 against righties. The Braves do have a right handed bat on the bench in Brandon Snyder. They have Jace Peterson as well, a left hander. Pierzynski already used with Tyler Flowers injured early in this game. There's ball four. And here comes Robin. He's going to make the move, and now. The veteran Nick Markakis going back. And we'll see if he will indeed hit. I would suspect that he's going to as Robin takes a long, slow walk. Markakis is a career 283 hitter against lefties if Jennings were to come in, but it is not going to be Jennings. So Nate comes running in. Will come walking out. And we'll be back. Back to beautiful Chicago on a new pitcher for the Sox. It's Nate Jones coming into the ball game. On for the 41st time. ERA two and a half. Four and two record. He inherits a couple of base runners at first and second. 
Ah, oh, fastball strike at 97 to Marcakis, who's one for three today, but 0 for two against Nate Jones' career. There you look at the numbers, and they've been pretty impressive. Two strikes. Outfield playing Marcakis as an extreme opposite field hitter. See the big gap in right center. They'll keep playing the line in left. On two. And out two and two to Marcakis. Darno at second, Freeman at first. Two balls, two strikes. Foul back hard. Kept that ball up and away from Marcakis, and now Deanna Navarro going out to talk with Nate. Don Cooper mulling over his options, thinking the game through. Sox have used Duke Albers. And Jones now after Quintana. Two and two, two down. Strike three, swinging off a slider. Jones eradicates Marcakis, and we will go bottom eight in the 5 4 game. Sox with the lead into the bottom of the eighth inning and baseball's two biggest summer events are back to back home run derby on ESPN July 11 7 p.m. Central and don't miss the 87th All-Star Game presented by MasterCard July 12th on Fox coverage begins at 6 30 p.m. Central time Ian Kroll ball one to Melky Cabrera who's got two hits to his name this afternoon as the Sox try to level the series at one a nice time to pick up an insurance run Golden opportunity last inning. Going to come up empty. And 
and Melky's been swinging it well. One and one. Hit in the air, left center field, and Darno hangs on to this one. Very similar to earlier in the ball game when he flashed across, only to catch the ball and saw it trickle out of his glove. That was on Tim Anderson's base hit in the third. Enciarte going over. Darno flashes right in front of him, and makes the catch. Ball high to Frazier, who homered in the second inning, doubled in a run in the third, and struck out of the sixth. Six innings for Julio Terran, the Braves starter today. Frazier bounds it left of second. And the second baseman Beckham with the shift on throws Frazier out. That's what the card looks like. No sign of David Robertson warming in that Sox bullpen, so it looks like this is going to be Nate Jones's game to close out. It'll be Frank Kaur, Garcia, and A.J. Pierzynski in the ninth inning for Atlanta. And you would think it'll be Nate Jones. There's no activity in the Sox pen. Over the dugout by Laurie, one and two. Sox have struck out just twice today. One walk, two strikeouts, everything else in play or over the wall, as was the case with Frazier. One, two. Ibar on the move. Too late. Second hit for Laurie today. The inning stays alive. On our Xfinity Speed Replay, we'll take a look at the second Laurie hit. No chance at all for Ibar, who was playing back by the time he got it there. Laurie had beat it out. The Speed Replay is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. This is a golden opportunity to steal a base. Let's see if Brett, who has stolen a few, will be looking for another one. Is that quick throw to first base? Skips away. But stolen seven out of his ten attempts. Another throw over there. AJ Pierzinski has struggled this year throwing out prospective base stealers. So had Tyler Flowers coming into this game. Five out of 36 apprehended by Pierzynski. Up high. Tyler, before he left the game with tweaked hamstring, he was only one for 36 in cutting down would be base stealers. That's been a problem. Monumental problem for the Braves this year. Ninety four for a strike, one and one to Navarro. So even with two outs on the board, you take the risk and yeah, send him. Absolutely. Base hit gets you then an all important insurance run. 
outside two and one. Sox started this homestand with three against the Yankees. Sox won two of those. Lost to Atlanta yesterday, even two up, two down. Popped up foul by Navarro. Tomorrow, Mike fulton for Atlanta on the mound. James Shields for the Sox in the finale before the All-Star break. Two and two from Kroll. Sharply hit but foul. What a special delivery. There you go. Yeah. Go to first awkwardly by Kroll. Let's step back off the mound and throw. Very few guys have been able to do it really well. They have to have an enormously strong arm. More times than not, we've seen that exact play tried at first base, and I would say that 75% or higher wind up in the dirt. He's one for one today. <laughs> two and two. Lori chased back. It's unusual that Brett would have an animated conversation with Freddie Freeman. Two and two. Navarro in the air. There's nobody around. And Ciarte makes his way to the spot for out number three. Sox need three outs to take down the Braves. 5 4 after eight. Follow White Sox Baseball Live with the MLB.com at Bat App. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day live game video highlights, StatCast news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone and tablet. It's so Nate Jones has the ninth today, and he guns in a strike to Jeff Francoeur. Blazing fastball. 
knee high over the plate and Frank Gore, a good first ball fastball hitter couldn't pull the trigger. Out of his shoes on that one 0 and 2. Of the two I'm happy he swung at the second one which. Was. On the outside corner out away from it. Slider strike three Nate Jones. Takes care of another back to back strikeouts for him. After entering with two out of the eight. After a couple of fastballs, you see one of these. One of the hardest sliders in the game of baseball. And no chance for a free swinging right hander who expanded his zone drastically. On the ground, back to Jones. He can't find it. And Garcia is safe. It's right there. That uh, got a piece of him, and I think he's more frustrated than injured. Now they're going to take a look at him, and we'll watch it again. We talked about pitchers that fall off the mound, and in the case of a right hander falling off to the first base side. And that was right off the hip. Hit him in the hamstring, it appeared. Well, the question would then be if Nate Jones couldn't get through this, which it looks like he can, so that hypothetical is out the window. This is the type of game where David Robertson would normally pitch in the ninth inning but he has not been up and so we'll see what the word is post game on David Robertson. He... No Nate's going to be fine. A one hopper to the hamstring. He would be the rare one hopper to the hamstring that would take you out of a game. What we can tell you is David Robertson was on the lineup card that was posted in the clubhouse. Pre-game this afternoon. Jones will go against AJ Pierzynski, who is the lead run for Atlanta in a one-run game. AJ might be the original good man for two if you can get him to hit the ball on the ground. He's grounded into eight double plays this year in 170 at bats. Round ball through the right side. Garcia to second. Throw there is not in time to peg him on the way back. Two on, one out. That one almost hit Garcia on its way out to right field. I mean, it missed him by an eyelash. And he almost runs a little too far at second base. He's going to be taken down for a pinch runner. As AJ delivers one, I mean, just missed him. Well, it's Chase Peterson on to pinch run for Adonis Garcia as the tying run in this game. And Ibar will turn around to hit from the left side where he's a much better hitter than he is right handed. Peterson, a very athletic guy out there at second, a former football defensive back at McNeese State. Here's Dan Jennings watching the proceedings from the bullpen. Ball one to Ibar. He is hitless in the series 0 for 8 6 strikeouts. But hitting from his strong side, 229 as opposed to 197 as a left hand hitter. Strike one. And a fastball from Jones. Ibar thought it was hazy. Foul 
back one and two from Jones to Ibar. Sox have played so many close games. 44 of the 86 decided by two or one. Ball and two strikes. Jones to Ibar. Inside, it gets away from Navarro. The runner is up to second and third. That one well inside off the plate. It'll go as a wild pitch. That's just the second wild pitch of the year for Nate Jones, and this one could be very costly. Throws a slider. Hits well in front of Navarro. Fortunately, when it hit the shin guard on the one hop, it didn't get away further. 2-2. Two, two. Just missed. Three and two. Umpires in the stands wanted that slider for a strike, but as you can see by the Xfinity pitch tracks, it was just high and out of the zone. Three balls, two strikes. He caught him swinging. A slider from Jones, two down in the ninth. Tried to throw a slider earlier in the at bat. It got away. This time the slider struck him out. So now you got a choice here. As Robin comes running out, he's going to stay with Jones. Normally you run to the mound, you're going to stay with the pitcher. But the question then becomes you got first base open, Darno and Beckham, right handers, coming up. The danger of the intentional walk here of Enciarte is another walk that would tie the game. The other danger is Enciarte actually has had a better season against left-handers than right-handers. So Jones is facing a guy who's under his average for the year and in this situation. Away. They're going to put him on. Take their chances with Darno. Chase Darno, who doubled down the line last inning, he is the 27th out. Shots have been looking for all day. NCRT is one for three in the game. Darno is one for four. What you gain is a force at every base. What you lose is the ability to throw four pitches out of the zone and not give up your lead. Robin going with the righty righty advantage. I do like this move. It's a question of now making it stand up. It will require Jones to eliminate Darno. 5 4 Sox on the ground. Frazier at third. This game is finished off. Five for the final. Nate Jones secures it. An inning of the third save and a good play at first base by Jose Abreu. This one wide of the bag. Frazier over to his left. And Jose able to scoop on the backhand. And a win for the Sox and for Jose Quintana who exited after six with a one run lead and the bullpen made it hold up. 5-4 your final score. Sox are back to three over 545 and 42. The Braves drop to 30 and 58. And we will wrap it up for you, U.S. Cellular Field. Coming up after this, the Sox hang on.